Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Million Dollar Body Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Nate. And if you're here, it's probably because you're a high performer or a business, uh, business owner, a real estate agent, or someone who's interested in maximizing your physique, your finances, and your family time using fitness and nutrition as force multipliers. And if you can help me uh, alliterate a little bit more and add more Fs to that sentence, I'd appreciate it. If you're not already a part of the Facebook group, definitely go to n8trainingsystems.com slash group. That's where we stream these podcast episodes every Monday and you can join and ask questions. There's a ton of cool things happening in the group as well. We have a lot of free resources for you. Um, so again, go to n8trainingsystems.com slash group and join us there. If you're already in the group and watching us live, we are excited to dive in because we're going deep today on glycogen priming method and glycogen priming diet and exactly what it is and how can you use it in your own life. And like I said earlier, I've been playing this one close to the vest because it's my proprietary system. It's something I came up with in 2018. I really love it, but I'm realizing that I can't help everyone in the world. I can't help everyone in this Facebook group. So let me just put this information out here. I want you to try this. I want you to take the challenge at the end of this. Try this out for just a few days and see what your energy changes like. What the, I, obviously, you're going you're gonna to get some results in your body, guaranteed. But what's your energy like as you do that? So before we get started in this podcast, one of the things we'd like to do is give a shout out to the people accomplishing big things in the Million Dollar Body community. So I want to give a shout out right now to uh, my guy, Jason Payne. Jason is a roofer in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I know we're kind of moving into monsoon season. So if you need someone who's a high integrity guy who's, who can do roofs like nobody's business, you've got to give, uh, give a check Jason and his company, State 48 Roofing Out. Now, the reason I'm shouting out Jason is because over the last year, he's built his business from nothing to something that's really, really incredible, a large scale business, and he's done it all on his own. So there's a lot of, a lot of naysayers, people are talking about how he couldn't do it, how he shouldn't go out on his own, how he should stay working for someone else for a really long time. And he said, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not about to be the person who's working for someone else my entire life. And he went and he took the, took the plunge, bought the equipment, built the business, did, did all the things to get his license, get his LLC in line. And I just gotta say, this is exactly what we're looking for the, in the Million Dollar Body community. Jason, you're rocking it, amazing job. I wanna give a shout out also to Dr. Alan Christensen. Dr. Christensen has been a guest on the Million Dollar Body podcast in the past. Such a smart dude, such an amazing guy. And he recently just knocked out the Boston Marathon virtually um, for the first time ever. They're doing it virtually because of, uh, because of all the, the COVID stuff and traveling, whatever else. So he did it virtually, but rather than doing it in Phoenix, he went up to Flagstaff and he ran 26.2 miles. And I just got to give a shout out to him for because that is awesome. That is that he's got the exact mentality that I love to talk about in the Million Dollar Body Group here. So Dr. Christensen, you rule. Keep it up. All right. Today, we want to talk about the glycogen priming diet or the glycogen priming method. What is it and how can you use it in your life to get results? Okay. So basically, this came about as a kind of a brainchild of of something that I had written a lot about in about 2014, 2015. I was working with a lot of business owners at the time and they were all saying that they couldn't, they couldn't like get past that midday slump, that 2.30 p.m., 3.30 p.m. slump where they just felt like they were always behind the eight ball, could never finish up their work, would come home, keep working. Even if it was incredibly inefficient, they were just trying to get through and just grind it out. I started an article for a site called Breaking Muscle about how to eat for all the energy. And it was just kind of this idea of basically eating light in the morning and then having your bigger meals at night, which goes against common, common wisdom a lot of the times where, I don't know if you heard the eat bre breakfast like a prince, lunch, lunch like a, I don't know, something, and then dinner like a pauper. It's basically like eat big in the morning, middle in the, in the lunch, and then uh, light in the PM. Well, this is opposite of that. We're talking about eating a really light breakfast, eating a really light lunch, and then having a bigger dinner. And there's a couple different reasons for that from a scientific and nutritional perspective that I'll share with you later. But that was the idea at the time. Then in 2018, a couple of, people, a couple of my clients came to me and were like, bro, we're getting crushed right now. Um, we we're working super hard. These guys were in real estate. They're selling multiple, like, multiple tens of houses per year. So they're in the upper echelon of real estate agents. And they were just willing to make a change. So they wanted some results and they wanted to, to get out of the office faster. So they're basically like, how can we set up our nutrition in a way that doesn't like take us out of the office? It doesn't slow us down at PM. And we are able to actually eat dinner with our clients, like or with our, with our families, excuse me, like figure that out for me and I'll pay you whatever you want. Go. So I'd ask them, well, what's the, what's the one thing that you would like to change about your life in six months to a year? 
if you have a wave of magic wand and just change it, what would you want to change? And the first thing they said was energy. That came across, they came up across the board. Everyone said energy. I need more energy. I need more mental acuity. I need to be more on. I need more focus. I need energy. And then like fat loss and weight loss, that was like third, fourth, fifth down the line, which is strange to me because I'm so used to programming for people who wanted to burn fat. That's kind of the, 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 the people that, that come to me looking for results. Always I'm talking about fat burning. But these guys were adamant that energy was the number one thing. So they were, these guys were hard charging producers, they're businessmen, but they didn't feel like they had the energy to do what they needed for their business and still be excited to, to be with their families at night, come home and not crash out in front of the couch for 30 minutes to try to like re-gear for the, for the evening. So the other things we wanted to do was we wanted to limit extreme feelings of hunger or deprivation. We wanted to eliminate any sort of caffeine that was needed after lunch. We wanted to decrease your meal prep so you don't have to have like a bunch of neat, nifty little boxes where you're eating like five-day-old tilapia and asparagus. Um, we wanted anti-inflammatory, simple nutrition. We wanted it to be simple. Um, talking about like single pan, two pan meals, not like no crazy hour-long preps. Um, no like exotic ingredients like yak butter or like the, you don't need like the, the small hairs from inside like a wasp for like your shake. We don't need any of that shit. Um, and then we also wanted room to eat with your family. Now, those are the big things, okay? So also belly fat came up, keep coming up as a priority, but it was kind of lower down the line. So I got to get, I got busy putting together a performance eating plan, not for athletes though, but for people who need high performance in their business and who are like, who are leaders in what they're doing. So not necessarily people who are out on the track running really hard and lifting weights and then hit like throwing footballs around. I'm not program. I didn't build a, a nutrition plan for Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. I built it for the guy who's, who's leading a company with 60 employees. I built it for the person who's a solopreneur who's at home out there on a computer all day long. I built it for the person who's a real estate agent who's, who's driving around look and going out to, with clients doesn't know when they're going to stop and might end up driving through Taco Bell. That's who this is for. Okay. So if you're like, well, what about keto? No. Well, what about like, what about my athletic career? Not me. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I never, I, that's not, that's, that's, the wrong, that's not who I am. So, um, we, with, with these clients, we talked to the steps that would, it would take them to be successful on a program, like how much time they had available, how much time they had to make food, well, what supplements they could potentially be using to amplify their results. And a lot of the results from energy are going to be like, we're going to need to sleep good. We're going to need to stay awake. We're going to need to use our caffeine appropriately, right? So we want to make sure we limit the caffeine in the, in the afternoon, make sure it's doing its job in the morning, and then make sure that you're sleeping super awesome during, during the night, not waking up, not, going to, not having four hours of sleep. So the craziest thing was that after six weeks, I was blown away by some of these results that they were getting. Not only did these guys report that their energy levels had skyrocketed, skyrocketed, skyrocked, but they also had dropped 15 and 18 pounds respectively in six weeks. And I was like, whoa, hold up. Like, cause that's like, that's great. That's what we're looking for. Obviously you want a diet that's going to help you eliminate belly fat, but I didn't really expect it to be this powerful. So these, so, you know, you can see some of those results on other diet plans, right? You can go on a, on a really restrictive hyper, like all greens, all tilapia, no food, no, no starches, no nothing. And you can drop 18 pounds in six weeks. It's not, that's not unheard of at all. But the thing is, did you, did you suffer while you're doing it? And, and can you sustain it long term? Because yeah, let's say I go, I want to go drop 20 pounds. I can go do that like in the next two or three weeks. But I guarantee you after that, my weight's going to come right back up because not only the methods I was using were not sustainable, they were not enjoyable. And I was suffering the whole time. I was tired. I was grouchy. Ask anyone who's been in ketosis for a long time. Ask, well, actually ask their significant other, ask their partner. Hey, were they fun to be around while they were in keto? Hell no. Those people are miserable. So I wanted a plan that you could actually, you know, interact with your clients, make more sales in your business and still enjoy the benefits of weight loss while having a ton of energy. So who's this for? Well, it's for everyone. You don't like, you don't have to be a business owner to enjoy having more energy and more mental acuity. So if, but, but really think about like, we're designing this from a performance standpoint first. Okay. So most of us are not going to be competitive athletes, but it doesn't mean that we're not competitive or looking for an edge in our business and our lifestyle. However, that said, I'm going to tell you a story about um, a time when I used, I actually worked at a gym when I first graduated from college, I worked at a gym for about a year. And then I was like, well, 
time to get serious, time to get a real job. So what did I do? I went out and got a real job doing um, telephone marketing for a for-profit university called Kaplan, Kaplan University or Kaplan College. And what we would do is we'd get on the phones, we'd sit at the desks, get on the phones, and it would auto dial for us every like every 90 seconds or whatever. We timed our bathroom breaks. It was it was the man for sure. And we would tell people like, hey, you wanna you wanna get a better education? You should sign up for our criminal justice program. And like people would be like, wait, is that like CSI? You tell me if I if I do your program, I'll get I'll be on CSI. And I'd be like, yeah, probably. I don't know, bro. Probably for sure. If that's a real thing. But what I noticed at this, at this job is that people would start off the day lit because there's free coffee in the break room so we'd like we get lit we get there at eight and nine or nine or whatever and everyone drinking like five six seven cups of coffee until about noon then everyone would leave we have an hour break right so everyone would take what 62 minutes is that like you could like fudge just a little bit they'd go across the street to like you know chilies or um some other burger place and they would just murder this big old juicy burger and fries okay and a lot of us do this, right? We go out, we got to eat, and we're having something with a big bun, some fries. And then what I noticed is that everyone in the office, like the, if the decibel level was like 30 in the morning, it would be like 12 in the afternoon. Everyone's like, shut the blinds a little bit. Can you just, can you just, I'm just gonna put this over my eyes. Like I'm still working, but like I'm gonna cover my face. A little bit. And the energy level would just drop like a rock in the afternoon because people were eating dog shit food and then coming back in with, with no real like, emphasis on performance or you know, getting through the day, they would just, just kind of sit and suffer through the last four hours of the day. So it was never any fun. The afternoons were always rough. It was always like, oh man, that was the longest 12 minutes of my life. I can't wait for five o'clock to come around. So we're just sitting there watching the clock waiting for 5 p.m. And if that's you, if you're just waiting for 5 p.m., if you're waiting for Friday, this might not be the best, the best program for you. Um, but if, there, if you are not necessarily just waiting for Friday, not in the TGIF crowd, but you want more out of your, out of your days, out of your afternoons, you want to get everything you possibly can, and the, all the joy, the enjoyment, the energy, the focus, the performance out of the, those times in your day, as well as the mornings, then this could be a good fit, okay? So eating food, basically something we all do, right? And one of the biggest things that me and LeBron James kind of have in common, we both eat. But the type of food, the meal timing, and the quality of the foods are really, are really impactful of, the, of the, how we think, how we feel, how we sleep on a daily basis. And we can use this food like a performance enhancing drug to give us an edge at work and to able, enable us to be super focused in the evenings with our family as well, okay? Or we can continue to eat processed garbage and uh, cross our fingers and hope that we have more energy tomorrow morning when we wake up. It'll happen, it'll happen. But the choice is ours, right? We eat every single day. We're eating breakfast, lunch, and dinners, and no one can force us to eat spinach instead of donuts. So if we have a framework for maximizing your energy during the day and maximizing your muscle and minimizing your fatigue and your belly fat, would you capture it or would you let it slip? Yo, yo. So the biggest thing here is the breakfast, okay? Most standard American breakfasts are high carb, high energy, high sugar, and they put us in a bad position for the rest of the day. I talk extensively about this on other podcasts, on other videos I've done. Essentially, the, the idea is this. If you are out of balance in your, if you're, with your body, and you'll know that if you have uh, a spare tire on the waistline, you'll know that you have your insulin resistant. If, you have, if you're out of balance there, and you eat a banana, you eat a donut, you have some cereal, you have some, some high carb, high sugar, waffle, whatever, donut, all the things that are American breakfast foods, what happens is your, your blood sugar instantly spikes up, okay? And then our insulin goes to meet it, probably overshoots, shoots back down. Now we have a little bit of insulin. Our body's like, hey, got some insulin. Let's get some, let's get some blood sugar in here. So you're like, you're, you're sends this, a hunger signal to your brain, says, hey, let's eat some food. You're like, it's 10.30, I just ate. But you're like, well, I guess I'll have half a donut, right? We don't just go have like 14 blueberries, right? So you have half a donut, spikes again, insulin goes to meet it, and then all day like this. And so we're never in balance, always out of balance. And that's where we get those highs and lows, those peaks and valleys in our energy and our hunger, okay? So that's where our hunger pangs are coming from and our sweet tooth. If you have a sweet tooth, you're out of balance, okay? So breakfast, the glycogen priming breakfast is based on the fact that we need protein and fats for breakfast and no carbohydrates, okay? If you wanna have some, a little bit, I find that eight grams is about the tipping point for most people, but ideally in a, in a perfect world, keep that, keep the, the carbohydrates out of your breakfast and we'll ship those to the end of the day like we'll talk about in a second so the biggest thing is proteins and fats in the morning 
okay? So this is gonna stabilize your blood sugars. This is gonna stabilize the hormones you have, and this is gonna give you a lot of energy and satiety that you need for the full day. So what we want, what we're looking for is to get through to lunch with a little bit of hunger, okay? I don't want you to be famished at lunch, but I also don't want you to be, be full and like feeling heavy. I want you to feel light. I want you to feel nimble and like mobile and like ready to go do stuff, but without, without feeling like I'm hangry. I hate everything about this. I'm so mad. Because that's like, because if you're hangry, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be like, like, hey, I got some food cravings. I got some, like, like someone, someone was like, like the food is just calling me and it's like, hey, yo quiero Taco Bell. And it's like, and you're gonna eat the first thing that, that pops up for you most of the time when you're, when you're in that zone. So we wanna get to lunch with a little bit of light hunger, all right? And the reason for the light hunger is also, is also a, by design because when you're a little bit hungry, what you're doing is you're activating your sympathetic nervous system. That's your fight or flight, okay? So you have on one side sympathetic, the other side you have parasympathetic. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. Sympathetic is fight or flight. So like you have the extremes, right? Running from a tiger, being fast asleep. But we wanna be kind of like right in here, okay? So just active just active, like we're not like, we're in hunt mode, right? If you think about our ancestors in the like Paleolithic, Paleolithic era, whatever, if they were going out to eat, they're pro they're, if they're going out to hunt, they're probably not full of, of a woolly mammoth meat, right? So when you're a little bit hungry, you're a little bit more on edge, you're a little bit more alert, you're paying more attention to your surroundings, you're able to have more focus and mental acuity. So that's very, very important to this whole program is, is harnessing your feelings of hunger. People think, like especially in the U.S., we think that hunger is a bad thing. Even though none of us have really been hungry since like 1940s, like we think of this hunger as like, oh no, starvation mode. I missed lunch. I'm gonna be star no, no, you're fine. You really don't need to eat. You don't. You can go like 72 hours without eating without any repercussions whatsoever. So you don't need to eat lunch. You're fine. Don't don't stress about it. But if you're a little bit hungry, a little bit on edge, your sympathetic nervous system is going to activate for you and help you do better in your sales, in your business, with your family. And you're just gonna be more alert and attuned to the people around you. Huge win, okay? We gotta keep that rolling through lunch, okay? So we don't wanna slow us down. I think that a lot of people are like, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. For a business person, lunch. Lunch is the most important meal because it's the easiest to screw up. And if you screw it up, you're gonna be paying for it the rest of the day. So lunch is the make or break meal if you wanna be productive after lunch. Most of us aren't having three course meals and a few martinis for lunch, but like, honestly, if you're still like speed eating a Chipotle burrito in your car um, between your like sales appointments, you might as well just have the martinis because it's going to give you the same like slow down, rest and digest, shift over to the parasympathetic nervous system side of things effect. Before we settle down from our nomadic lifestyle to a life of planting and harvesting and Starbucks and Wi-Fi on airplanes, we were hunters and gatherers, right? So... Uh, when we changed this like settled agrarian civilization, it changed so much about how we operate. Um, but our survival mechanisms re remained relatively unchanged since we've only been living this like the agrarian way for several hundred years. So we, may, we gotta stay hungry throughout the day. You wanna stay a little hungry between like 10, 10 a.m. and like 3 p.m. If I give you one piece of advice, it's be stay a little bit hungry. So I don't need you to put on a loincloth and go like chase down your neighbor's livestock if you live in Phoenix. Um, but simply just using our natural inclinations, our natural like abilities that are built in and innate and ingrained um, to, to get more energy and do better work in the afternoons. Um, that's just what, that's gonna be such a benefit while your competitors are all off there um, nodding off after eating a giant bowl of pasta. So this means eating a lighter lunch than you're accustomed to, okay? So th the big thing that we wanna do is I love a big ass salad for lunch, okay? A big ass salad. So that what we're looking for is basically proteins and vegetables for, for our lunch, okay? That's the best thing you can possibly have. I like to add in some sort of sauerkraut, like as a probiotic, I think that's got a lot of natural benefits. It's kind of like a nice, like crunchy sauce too. That's personal opinion. Uh, um, but I think that's a great way to get in some great phytonutrients, probiotics, prebiotics, and just like have a really, really healthy, beneficial lunch. If I'm on the go, if I'm running and I can't, I don't have time for a big ass salad or some sauerkraut and some, and some chicken thighs, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a protein shake, okay? Protein shake with, um, I'll probably do protein powder, do some almond milk, something really light, Okay, and then if I can, I'll throw in some, like a scoop of greens or some sort of um, like a reishi, red reishi mushroom powder I've been using recently. Anything with like some added benefits, phytonutrients, antioxidants, those are gonna give me a little bit of a, a immune boost and a, just a boost throughout, throughout the rest of the day. So 
either a big ass salad or a protein shake at lunch can be really beneficial. Okay. And now dinner time. So we talked about breakfast. That's proteins and fats, baby. So that's like, that's like uh, scrambled eggs with a little bit of a little bit of sausage. That could be just, just a big old omelet with like six eggs. That's totally fine. That could be a protein shake with a little bit of peanut butter or PB2. We talked about lunch. That's proteins and vegetables. So that could be a big ass salad, like a Cobb salad with really light dressing, low on the fats. That could be um, like a pork tenderloin from the night before with a little bit of sauerkraut on top, some cut up bell pepper strips. I love carrots. Carrots I've been uh, raving about recently because they just came out with some research about some fatty alcohols in carrots that help you digest your carbs better. So one of the best things you can do is just grab like, eat one of those, eat like a half of those one pound bag of baby carrots and have like, some, uh, some chicken thighs, burger patties, something like that, just some high protein meat. And then dinner, we're gonna sleep deeper with the right glycogen priming dinner. And the way, we're, the way we've been like thinking about this, right, is if we have a big Chipotle burrito high carbs at lunch, that's gonna make us tired. It's gonna make us fall asleep. It's gonna put us in like more of that parasympathetic rest and digest state. So let's harness that. We, what we already know about, about our body's response to a big meal of rice, beans, fruit, any sort of sweets, anything that with a higher carb, higher sugar, and let's use that to get better sleep at night, right? It stands to reason. So the best kind of dinner is going to actually um, maximize your energy for tomorrow. It's going to offer you the opportunity to prime your glycogen stores for the following day, which is the reason the name of the diet. It's going to allow your flexibility with your nighttime meal. So you can have it with clients at a restaurant. You can cook at home with your family. You can do, you can have some ice cream and, and not worry about it. It just gives you a lot more flexibility because of how we did the early part of the day. It's going to actually allow you to burn more body fat during the active part of your day and then allow you to kind of rest and decompress in the end of the day. And then you can also get more restful deep sleep, which who doesn't want that, right? So if you've done it right the rest of the day, now is your chance to have a bigger meal with friends and family without guilt and set yourself up for an energetic tomorrow by priming your glycogen stores, okay? That's just a fancy way of saying you didn't really have a whole lot of carbs, so all the glycogen that you burned off from like yesterday's dinner um, got burned off through your workout, walking around, moving, just being active during the day. So your, your muscles have kind of lost a lot of that the muscle glycogen, the energy, and now they needed you to rebuild that. So it's a great time to have your carbohydrates, okay? So obviously this is gonna be amplified if you train during the day because many of the nutrients that are partitioned towards repairing your broken down muscles um, are gonna be what's burned off throughout the day as well. So a lot of gurus or whatever will tell you, oh, don't eat carbs or don't eat anything after like 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., whatever that magic number is, as if somehow eating at 6.59 is okay, but eating at 7.01 is gonna go straight to your belly. So, but if you're eating in this specific way, that's not the case at all. So it's mostly a, it's a simple way of getting people to stop grazing after dinner, which is when you're not you know, making good choices anyways, but that's not, there's no basis in science for that 8 p.m. cutoff time. So at dinner time, what we wanna do is we wanna have a protein, you guessed it. We wanna have a carbohydrate and we wanna have a vegetable as well, okay? So low fats in the PM, but high carbs. So that could be rice, it could be potatoes, it could be oats, it could be, you know, tortilla. I love, I love some pasta, I'm having that like once or twice a week, you know? But it's this type of eating is gonna set you up in a way to be very, very successful and also not limiting yourself in what you're choosing to eat. So. It doesn't have to be super fancy. Most of the time, I like to make my, my food in like a one, I like to make a one pan dinner. So I have my rice cooker going over here, cook up a little bit of meat in a pan, cook in the barbecue, cook in the oven, whatever that looks like, put it all together and out the door. I like to have a, uh, a kind of a Mexican themed, like burrito bowl style meal. I like to have an Asian themed, which is like some stir fry veggies, some rice and some um, whatever, whatever meat throw an egg in there for good measure. And then um, I like to have kind of like a breakfast for dinner meal. Those are some of my three go-tos. I'll probably do those e easily once or twice a week. And it's just so easy. So for breakfast for dinner, I'm doing either potatoes or sweet potatoes, cut in like, like quartered or, or like in home fries, put those in a pan, throw some sausage on top once those are cooked a little bit, crack some eggs on top. You got like a hash, it's awesome, it's easy. One pan, 50 minutes. So the glycogen prime method is also amazing because it allows for desserts from time to time. The best days for this are the ones when you actually have trained, done like a harder day, like a leg day or something like that, or limited yourself more in terms of what you ate, breakfast and lunch. So basically what we talked about today is 
breakfast, proteins and fats, lunch, proteins and vegetables, dinner, proteins and carbs and vegetables. And this is just such a great way and easy framework to structure your day. And if you're looking for like, hey, well, what are some good carbs, proteins, and fats? Like I get confused about those things. Just give me a, just drop a GIF or a like below and I will set you up with my, um, my macronutrient cheat sheet. So it's something you can just print off, put on your fridge. It just tells you that all the macronutrients basically aligned in terms of what the, what's the best ones to be eating um, and just make it really easy for you. So if you want that, it's, it's my gift for you for free. And if you, if you try this out, I would love to hear what your experience was. I'd love to challenge you right now to eat in this style, eat a glycogen priming diet for 14 days for the next two weeks and report back to us. How did you feel? What are your energy like? What changed about your afternoons and your PMs? Did you have more fun eating with your family? Like what, what were the, some of the subtle benefits that you get from this? Because I think that's one of the big things is that we lose out on the idea of like, of all these external benefits and we stay so focused on like, did I lose weight? Not realizing that if it's not enjoyable, you can't do it long term. And it's not enjoyable, it's not sustainable. So you have to figure out a way that's sustainable. And one of the best ways to do that is by using it to amplify your energy. And that's just the bottom line. So guys, if this, was, if this was helpful for you, drop me a like if you want that, or drop me a GIF. Give me a GIF down below if you want that uh, macronutrient cheat sheet. I'll make sure you get a copy of that. And as always, please feel free to invite people to this group. Make sure they get, they're a part of it and they can jump in, share some, uh, share some of the information, get some re good resources, and they, uh, they have what they need to be super successful as well. So if you like the podcast, make sure to uh, like us on uh, Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Apple podcast, all of them, leave us a review and tell your friends, tell your mom, call your, call your mom right now. Actually tell her you love her. All right, y'all hope you're having an amazing day. I'll talk to you very soon. Be safe out there.